Well, good evening, church family, and welcome back to our Wednesday evening Bible study time together, and welcome to week two of our Summer Bible Conference. I am excited uh, for this evening and for what the Lord has for all of us tonight, and I hope that you are as well, and I hope that you are uh, have been praying and, and uh, anticipating what God is going to do in your heart and life uh, in tonight's time together in his word and under the teaching and preaching of his word tonight in our summer bible conference last week we kicked off our summer bible conference so it was our first week and it was a great time together and we heard a great message a wonderful biblical message to help us in our christian life as a church member and uh, if you did not get to uh, hear that if you missed last wednesday's message and service I'd encourage you to go on our YouTube channel or Facebook page and you can pull up the video archive from last week or any of the weeks since we've been uh, doing online services and you can watch them. But uh, do especially listen to last week's as we were able to hear from my friend, uh, Pastor Ethan Malachuk from the Mount Greylock Baptist Church in North Adams, all the way up and over in the Berkshires of Massachusetts. And uh, he just brought forth a great message and a very helpful message to us as a church family about our church membership and uh, the important role that each one of us plays and can play to uh, help uh, the church. And uh, I was greatly helped with that and really encouraged with the message. And so I encourage you to watch that if you didn't. But uh, if you were there, I hope that it was a blessing and a help to you in your life. And I'm excited about what God has for us tonight. And uh, I will introduce our next speaker to you in just a moment. But before we do, if you do have any prayer requests, uh, I would uh encourage you to go ahead and put that in our chat right now. You can uh, comment what your prayer request is or if you have any updates uh, to that. Also, if you'd like to just send the prayer request to, uh, to myself or to us privately rather than doing it in the open chat, you can click the live prayer button and the live prayer button will send us a private message uh, notification that you are asking for prayer and then we'll respond to you and that'll be private. Nobody else will see that, just you and I. And when I respond to you, you'll be able to get a notification. You'll see that that uh, we responded to you and uh, you'll be able to just interact with, uh, with us directly and privately um, uh, rather than open in the uh, open comment section. And if you'd like to do that, feel free to do so. Um, or you can feel free to enter your prayer request in the open chat as well uh, if you're comfortable and would like everyone to see that so then everybody can take that to the Lord. And so go ahead and submit any uh, requests at this time and uh, or if you have any updates or praises as well that you'd like to share, you can enter those also. And uh, I, I want you to know I'm just encouraged and really excited about what God is doing in, in my heart and life and in, in our church's heart and life. I'm just really excited about what God is doing. I really sense that God is moving and working and uh, it is encouraging to me and helpful to me. And uh, I would encourage you to just continue uh, relying on the, the word and yielding to the Holy Spirit and uh, following every impulse of the Holy Spirit. And let's continue to let God work in our hearts and continue to uh, shape and grow us in our spiritual walk and, and uh, spiritual maturity. And uh, let's just keep growing for the Lord. And I'm excited about what God is doing. And uh, it has just uh, been a joy to see God working. And uh, as you're putting any information, uh, any prayer requests or praises in, I just want to also give you an update of our missionary of the week that we're going to highlight uh, tonight. And uh, this will be our missionary spotlight tonight. All right. And that is going to be the Carneys in Hungary, Brother Mike Carney. And uh, he and his wife and daughter were with us not too long ago, earlier this year. And before the pandemic started, we were able to spend, uh, I believe it was a Wednesday evening with them. It may have been a Sunday evening, but I believe it was a Wednesday evening we were able to spend with them. And uh, he gave us an update and uh, while they were here on furlough. And I uh, just received a letter from them and they had made it back to Hungary and things got kind of dicey during this pandemic time. And they had to go through kind of a, a, a string of, uh, you know, trying to get their flights rebooked. Everything got canceled and uh, they had a little bit of a tough time getting rebooked and to get back to Hungary uh, to their ministry and their field. But they finally did, and God worked it all out for them to be able to get back to Hungary. And they were very pleased and encouraged with, uh, with their return to their church. 
I've mentioned this before, but I always, uh, you know, I always pray for missionaries and their churches and their ministries when they're on furlough, uh, just because when that missionary is not there, I, I've heard stories of sometimes it, it takes a, you know, a harsh toll on the churches, on the churches there. But of course, the missionary is striving to work with the people and grow that church to a level where it can sustain itself and continue to grow and, uh, while they're away on a furlough. Because uh, that can be six months or a year while they're away, and uh, so they 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 hope and pray that the church will be mature and stable enough to be able to uh, to grow and move forward and 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 uh, continue moving forward while they're not there. But sometimes uh, it doesn't happen, and they just uh, were very pleased with their return when they got back to Hungary. And the people had uh, just a welcoming uh, reception and party for them and uh, just loved on them as they came back. And that's such a great thing to hear and to see uh, when they returned. And so they're just really enjoying the time being able to be back home uh, in their home, their mission, which is their home. And I love hearing about that, how God just knits the missionary's heart to their field and that becomes their home. And uh, they are just really blessed to be back. And encouraged to be back and uh, to see how well the people are doing and how they responded very well and uh, very spiritually to their time away on furlough. So they're doing well. Health-wise, they're doing well. Um, uh, Brother Carney um, had a stroke not too long ago, actually, and uh, he is recovering from that. He is doing much better, but he is still very weak and uh, still kind of working with a neurologist and getting some tests done and making sure that everything is uh, uh, progressing and moving back to normal and things are looking uh, well for him and getting back to normal but still has a bit of recovery to go but he is doing well so let's pray for him uh, for his continued recovery and uh, let's just pray for their ministry now as they get back to work there in their field as they serve the Lord there and strive to reach more people and if you have any prayer requests and you've uh, passed that along, let's all make sure to be lifting those up to the Lord. We're going to pray here uh, together, and I would ask that while I pray out loud, if you would take a moment to pray before the Lord as well. Uh, be praying in your heart as I pray. And let's pray together for our missionary friend. Uh, let's pray together for one another, and let's pray together for the service that we're about to have or, or the Bible uh, uh, message that we're about to receive uh, this evening. And let's pray for that as well. So let's take a moment and pray to the Lord. Lord, we do love you. We thank you so much for our church and our church family and all that you're doing in our hearts and in our lives. We thank you for uh, the privilege and blessing to be a part of the body of Christ here in our church, here in this city, in this community of Framingham, Massachusetts. We pray that you would just continue to work in us, that we would continue to grow and mature spiritually so that we continue to uh, shine and and live out the gospel of Jesus Christ in our lives and uh, also to take it, to share it with others. And I pray that you just help us to continue continue to spread the gospel in our community uh, and to our friends, our neighbors, our coworkers, our family, and all of those around us in our lives. So I pray that you'd use us in a great way to see people come to know you as their personal savior. And we thank you for uh, everyone that's a part of our church family. I pray that you just have your hand upon each and every one of us. Uh, Keep us safe and healthy and protected. Uh, Help us uh, doing right and following you and uh, glorifying you with our lives. And I pray that you just uh, help us to continue to uh, take steps forward for you, uh, steps of faith forward for you. Help us to be constantly moving forward, not stagnant, not maintaining, but moving forward for you, even if it's a big step of faith. May May we do that. May you challenge us with that. And may we respond to that in obedience, following your commands. And we pray that you just uh, be glorified in our lives and in our church. And tonight we do lift up our brothers and sisters to you, each one of us, the needs that we have amongst ourselves. May you be with each one. Lord, uh, I pray that you would uh, be with those who have health concerns and uh, health issues. And may you be with them, be with Joanne, with her continued uh, just... Uh, uh, pain that she's in and the struggle with her health. And I pray that you be with Lisa and I pray that you just, uh, Lord, help her. And I know that we received report that her pain has uh, gotten better. The the level of pain has gone down and subsided with the recent treatment or, or medicine that the doctors have provided. So we praise you for that. And we pray that you just continue to work uh, in her life towards 
uh, full recovery. Pray that you'd help her. And be with others that may have needs as well. Uh, be with Rachel and the progression of her health. I pray that you keep her uh, uh, well and be with her father, Ben, and, and uh, those that situation there with his housing. I pray that you just continue to give wisdom and direction. I pray that you would, Lord, be with Jerome and the request for his uh, uh, daughter-in-law, Gloria, as we prayed about last week. Continue to be with her, be with him in housing situation as well as he would like to uh, find new housing. I pray that you bless in that regard as well and uh, keep him healthy. And uh, I know that he had hurt his knee. And so I pray that you would just uh, continue to heal that and help him to recover fully from that. And uh, Lord, we thank you for all uh, the, the wonderful blessings that you have given us in our lives and in our church and uh, uh, the good health and and uh, the, the recovery from uh, health and all of that that you've done to work in our lives. We thank you and praise you for it. And uh, Lord, we do pray for the Carnies. We pray that you'd bless their ministry, bless their family, meet their needs spiritually and financially and physically, be with his health as he is still in a bit of recovery mode from the stroke that he had. We thank you for helping him to recover from that. We pray that you would help his recovery to continue to progress. And I pray that you'd use them in a mighty way and in a new and great way in the days ahead as they have returned from furlough. And I pray that you would just bless their, their ministry as they serve you there in Hungary. And Lord, now we do pray for our time together tonight under your word. We pray that you'd bless the preaching and teaching of your word. I pray that you would uh, use it to stir us, challenge us, and encourage us tonight. And I pray that we would draw closer to you, that we would yield to it and uh, be obedient to it. And I pray that you would open our hearts and soften us towards what you have and what you teach us in our hearts. I pray that you would uh, use it to conform us into your image, to mature, to grow spiritually, to uh, shape us to who you want us to be as your children. I pray that you would uh, just bless it and use it mightily in a great way in our lives. And we thank you for all the time that we can get together uh, and we can hear from your word and we can hear from uh, pastor friends around the country who will faithfully and will truthfully proclaim your word so that we can be helped and grown in our spiritual lives and walk with you. And I pray that that would be the case tonight. I pray that you'd be glorified with it and exalted. And, and we pray these things in your name. Amen. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time so far this, this evening as we shared some requests and prayed together. Thank you so much. Well, at this time, I am so excited to be able to introduce our next speaker to you. And uh, this is Pastor John Jupp. And he is a friend of mine uh, who pastors the Grace Baptist Church in Florida, Brandon, Florida. All right. So if you're ever vacationing and you're anywhere near Brandon, if you're ever down in Florida vacationing, uh, look for his church, Grace Baptist Church in Brandon. And if you're close enough, then go to his church. He'll be a blessing to you and he'll be a blessing to you tonight. And he's just one of those guys that in my life, uh, anytime I've talked with him over the phone or, uh, or just even over text messages or, or uh, seen him at an event or conference as we've crossed paths a few times in some different meetings we've been in, he is just an encourager. He's always been a blessing to me and he's always been an encouragement to me. And we actually went to Bible college together uh, at least for maybe one year or so uh, in California together. Um, I, don't, I, I don't remember the last time that we spoke if, and we, we caught up uh, from those times. If uh, I think we overlapped each other by a year. I think he came in during my second year, but that was my last year at that college. And I didn't know him super well. I didn't know him very well. Uh, at that time, I, I knew him, I knew of him, I didn't know him very personally at that time, but over the recent years, God has allowed our paths to cross again and uh, to be reconnected, and he has just become a really uh, dear friend and, and a great friend of mine, uh, and like I said, always an encouragement to me, uh, and I am so thankful for that. It's great to have good friends who help you spiritually in your life, who are concerned for you spiritually in your life, not just concerned about, you know, uh, who won the uh, who won the sports game, but how you're doing spiritually. And that's something that he is always uh, reaching out to me about. And I'm thankful for that and for his friendship. So tonight uh, I asked him to uh, preach the word for us tonight and teach the Bible uh, for us as a church to be a help to us, to be an encouragement to us, to, to uh, be a challenge to us tonight as we face these uncertain times and as we just try to continue moving forward for the Lord. Uh, according to his word and in a way that will glorify him. And he has prepared this message 
and it is a great message. You're going to be encouraged by it. I'm uh, uh, excited for you to hear it. We're going to hear a song first uh, before he preaches, and so listen to these wonderful lyrics of this great song uh, uh, talking about our hope that we have in Jesus Christ. And uh, let's be encouraged by that, and then let's uh, strive to share that with others as we hear the message from the Word tonight from Pastor Jupp from Florida. Hello, church. Uh, I'm so thankful that I could be with you, uh, and uh, I count it a privilege to be a friend of your pastor, and uh, hopefully uh, I can be an encouragement to you today. Uh, I'm going to bring uh, a message today that uh, God really just worked on my heart about, and it's 
the subject of sharing, okay? So many of you are familiar with sharing. I hope you're familiar with sharing. Share the road, share your Oreos, share, right, okay? Uh, maybe you remember the first time that you got yelled at for not sharing, okay? Share that with your brother or whatever it may be. Uh, but today we're going to talk about, from the book of Acts, the matter of discipleship and sharing with each other. And, uh, and, and I'm just really looking forward to this. So if you have your Bibles, go ahead and grab them. Acts chapter 2 is where we're going to be. And we're going to use that as uh, the way that we can see the truth that God has for us uh, here in His Word. And uh, we're going to unpack this matter of sharing. And so let's go ahead and jump right into it. Acts chapter number 2. It says in Acts chapter 2, verse number 41, Then they that gladly received His Word were baptized. And the same day there were added unto them about... 3,000 souls. So I'm sure your church is used to that. Uh, you guys have 3,000 people that get saved every Sunday or, or every week. Uh, but really, for this, this happening was just a tremendous feat and a miraculous moment, uh, the, the beginning of the church. Verse number 42. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. Now, I'm going to stop there for a second. I want you to see something there, that there was a continuation of their faith Sometimes we get this idea that faith happens on Sundays, that they got saved, and then they waited till the next Sunday to do anything with their faith, and yet we see that this group of 3,000 people, they immediately continued their faith. They went the next day, and they added to their faith. It says they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and breaking of bread and in prayer. And I'm so thankful that you know, there is an understanding of fellowship there. But let's keep going. Verse 43. It says, And fear came upon every soul. That is the reverence of God. Understanding who He is and who we are. Compared to God, uh, we have nothing but adoration and uh, praise to give to our God. And fear came upon every soul. And many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. Watch what it says. And all that believed were, and this is an important word, they were together. They were together. Okay, so this is an important word. The church was operating in such a way that it was working together. It wasn't just together on Sunday. They were operating uh, together. They were working together. It was a cohesive effort working together. Now watch what it says. Let's keep going. And had all things common. Had all things common. Verse 44, or 45. And they sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. And they continuing... Uh, they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. Now, I, I love the way that it says that there. Watch this. couple things. Number one, there was no need in the church that was not met by the church. God's people were working together. So if somebody in the church had a need, somebody else in the church was meeting that need. They were sharing with one another. They were sharing in the gospel. They were sharing in the word. They were sharing in prayer. They were sharing. Are you getting the picture here this morning? This is what we're going to be tackling here this morning. And so let's, let's keep going and we'll finish. And they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness, and I love that, gladness and singleness of heart. Now watch this. There are too many angry Christians. There are too many angry Christians. We should be a happy people. Look, on the darkest of days, we have the brightest of joy in Jesus Christ. We should have gladness. Now, that doesn't mean every day is a happy day, but every day should be a day filled with joy. Happy is based upon my circumstance. Joy is based upon Jesus. And so I can be glad every day because the joy of the Lord is my strength. And so let me give you this last verse, verse 47. Praising God and having favor with just the people who came to church. Is that what it says there? No, that's not what it says. What's it say? Having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily when the pastor won people to Jesus Christ. Is that what it says? No, that's not what it says. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. I love that because... Kind of the idea that we've got to grab a hold of in discipleship as a church is that the joy of the church is that God would see the church all sharing in every aspect of the church. That we would share in leadership. That we would share the word together. That we would share in fellowship together. That we would share in prayer together. This is God's joy in the church. Let's go number one. 
number one, talking about sharing this, uh, we see, number one, share the word. We must be a people that share the word of God. We must be sharing the word with one another. We must be sharing the word with others. But we should be a people that share the word. Let's go, number one, share the word with each other. You say, well, what do you mean? Well, when they got saved, what happened was there was mature believers. If we can say that, the apostles were the mature believers. And because they were the mature believers, they continued to teach these new believers the Bible. They taught them the things of God. They taught them Jesus Christ from the scriptures that they had. And they said, look, this is what this means about Jesus. And so the beauty of the church and discipleship is that we continue to share the word with one another. And we share it, watch this, through a mode of discipleship. Discipleship. Now, discipleship is something that we must be sharing. Every church that is a growing church is a church that is discipling. It's a church that is discipling. And you say, well, who is supposed to be discipling? Well, I'm so glad you asked that question. See, once again, when we're talking about the church, there's not this idea that the pastor or the deacons or the trustees or the Sunday school teachers are the ones that are supposed to be teaching discipleship. The mission of the church is that every member would be discipling somebody. Each individual believer would, yes, first and foremost be discipled themselves. That means you got saved and someone taught you the Word of God. But then move from that point to now you're discipling somebody. Now, I, I want to give you some, some kind of understanding behind this. I love this, this quote here. Discipleship is the art and science of helping people find follow, and fully become like Jesus. Discipleship happens as God's people show love, share truth, and live faith with one another, making new disciples along the way. Now ask yourself this question. If what we just read is true, and it is, are you, am I, making disciples? Is there somebody right now in my life that on a weekly basis, or maybe even a daily basis, that I am helping to mature in their faith. They came to Jesus Christ, and now I am making them a disciple of Jesus Christ. Hey, we are not called to make people attenders of church. We are called to make disciples of Jesus Christ. And so there's a beauty here. Let me break this down for you, okay? I, I made this chart, and I, hopefully this will help you kind of understand. We start with one person, and one person finds a new believer. I hope you can see this, but they find a new believer. And what they do is they take that new believer and for one year they disciple them until that disciple, uh, d discipler makes the other new believer a disciple. Are you seeing that pattern here? So the, the end of week, uh, uh, excuse me, end of year number one, we have two disciples now because one disciple, are you with me? The, the first disciple takes the new believer and daily is working with them. Monthly is working with them. Weekly is working with them. And makes them a follower of Jesus Christ. Now what happens now is now I, number one discipler, has, have made another discipler and I tell him, now go disciple somebody else. Go find somebody else. And so now I am discipling a new person. I've already discipled this person. But now I am discipling a new person. And now my brother that has walked with me for a year is now discipling his own person. And now what we've done is we've gone from one to two to four. Watch this. Watch the pattern here. And at the end of the four pattern, now what we do is we multiply to eight. Okay? So are you with me? Are you following along? We went from one to two to four to eight. Now if we follow this biblical pattern of discipleship, this is a biblical pattern of discipleship, that if we follow this biblical pattern of discipleship, what happens is amazing. Now, at first, it seems like you're just reaching one person at a time. It seems very minuscule. It, it seems small. But obedience, done the right way faithfully, will always have a tremendous payout. We'll always see God do something exponential with it. See, what God has called us to do is not to make results. He's called us to be faithful. And so as we're faithful to disciple people, God's going to give us the increase. Let me give you this next slide. If you were to do... The process that we just talked about for 30 years. At the end of 30 years through this process of multiplication, one person following this pattern will have reached over, watch this, 1 billion people. That number there, that's how many disciples would have been reached if we follow that pattern. 
Now, for the first couple years, it doesn't seem that way. For the first couple years, it seems like it's moving slow. Have you ever wondered, when you read the book of Acts, how is it that the accusation that is put upon the, the apostles is this? These are the men that have turned the world upside down, and now they've come hither also. Have you ever wondered about that? Well, what they did was, is they made disciples. See, there's a difference between getting people to come to church and making disciples. See, what disciples do is disciples make other disciples. But people that come to church have not made the commitment to be disciples. And so our call, our burden, should be to make disciples. Let me ask you this once again. Are you making disciples? Are you, am I, a disciple? Now watch this, the great part of this. If we, got, if we follow that pattern for 30 years, we would reach over one, remember, one billion people. But there's only 328 million people in the U.S. That means if you follow the pattern for the next 30 years, we will have reached America for Jesus Christ. And all God's people said, amen, right? That's exciting. If we follow God's pattern, God's pattern and plan always works. The problem is, is we've many times easily drifted away from God's pattern. We have looked for, can we, can, can we be real about this? Shortcuts in faith, but there are no shortcuts in faith. There is only discipleship. There's only the word of God. There's only personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Now watch this. That's just if one person did it, we would reach over 1 billion people. But watch this. If 20 people followed that, so I don't know how big your church is, but if 20 people in your church would decide, I'm going to be a disciple, I'm going to make disciples. If 20 people did that, I want you to see this. In 20, or excuse me, if 20 people did this for 30 years, that means we would reach 2.1 trillion disciples. Now, just in case you're wondering about that, the current population of the world is 7.6 billion. That means that even if we lost 10% of our disciples, we would still have more than enough to reach the world. You say, why are you sharing that with us? Because it's important for you to understand that you reaching that one person this year can make a tremendous impact for Jesus Christ. See, we've got to share our faith. We've got to share the Word of God. And once again, let me ask you, are you making disciples? Are you a disciple? And we've got to be real about that. So we can see that we must share the word for, for discipleship, but then we must share the word for encouragement. Man, many, many times the reason why we're struggling to make disciples is because we're discouraged. We're discouraged in our faith. We're discouraged uh, about what we're going through. We, we've gone through some trials right now. And what we need is for somebody to share a word of faith with us, to share a Bible verse, to encourage us in our faith. Man, share a Bible verse with somebody. Encourage one another. Let me give you the next one. What it does is, is discipleship, encouragement, number three, it grows us. Man, we are to grow in the Word. You cannot grow apart from the Word of God. Show me how much you're in the Word, and I'll show you how much you're growing. It's that simple. And we've got to get to a place where we are consuming the Word of God. That as we consume the Word of God, that it takes over our thoughts, and it takes over our habits, and it takes over our life. Hey, let me ask you this. Are you sharing the Word? Are you sharing the word with others? Man, let me encourage you to share the word of God with others. I, I love this quote here. Salvation is free, but discipleship will cost you your life. Discipleship will cost you your life. You say, well, what does that mean? That means salvation happens in a moment. That is, salvation is one moment where you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you ask Him to forgive you of your sins. But discipleship is a call to live a life according to the Word of God, trusting God, and letting Him have your life. We must understand that discipleship is not something that we do one time. It is happening for a lifelong time. And it's so imperative that we understand that. We must share the Word. We must share the Word with each other, and we must share the Word with others. Let me give you what the Bible says about this. In Mark chapter 6, verse 7, it says, And he called unto him the twelve, and he began to send them forth by two and two, and gave them power over unclean spirits. And then Luke 10, 1 says it this way, After these things the Lord appointed other seventy also, and sent them two and two before his face into every city and place whither he himself would come. Now, why is it important that we understand that pattern? It's important for you to understand that God is not calling us to reach the world solo. God didn't call your pastor to reach the world by himself. 
the, the word lets us know that Jesus encouraged us, yea, commanded us to go forward with somebody with us. Man, that's why discipleship is so important. Man, I go reach people with people. Uh, I go two by two. Man, why would we do that? We would do that because there's going to be times where you're going to be discouraged. You're going to need somebody to encourage you. There's going to be times where you don't feel like being a witness. And you're going to need somebody to encourage you to be a witness. And so the Lord knew that, and he gave us the mechanism. Hey, share the word. Share the word with each other. But share the word with others and do it together. Go two by two. So we share the word. Watch this. Number two, share the blessing. Share the blessing. It's important that we understand that we must share the blessings. Man, what I love about the early church was they were good at this. They were good at getting together from house to house. They would get together and they would eat food. Amen? Right? They would eat food. You, you wonder where that came from, right? It came from the Bible. They got together and they broke that bread in communion and they broke that bread in fellowship. And, and watch this. They prayed together. Man, they prayed together. Man, we need to be churches that we're sharing these things. We share the blessings of life. Hey, we should be a church that, yes, lasts together. And we enjoy the blessings together. Now, let me ask you this. When was the last time you got together with somebody, not because it was just church, but because you were just enjoying their fellowship? Share the blessings of fellowship. We must enjoy the blessing of fellowship. You know, I realize we're in a moment in history where that is maybe hindered a little bit. But let me, let me encourage you, just because it's hindered doesn't mean it's halted. Just because it's hindered doesn't mean it's halted. It doesn't mean that you can't FaceTime somebody. It doesn't mean that you can't Zoom somebody. It doesn't mean that you can't put a mask on and go sit in a, a trunk and talk to each other or, or come to church and love on each other. And I realize it's different for everybody right now, but man, whatever mode you can fellowship, fellowship and encourage one another, share the blessings of fellowship. Hey, share the blessings of life. Man, I, I love this. I, I, what I love about church is when, when people have babies, you get to enjoy that together. And, and when people get married, you get to enjoy that together. And, and, and when people, you know, get, get answered to prayer, we get to enjoy that together. Man, get good at sharing life together. Man, that early church, I believe the reason why they grew so quickly was because they did it biblically. And part of the biblical aspect of discipleship is, is that we do life together. Hey, you shouldn't just see your church members Sunday and then next Sunday. You should see them Monday, and they should hear from you Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday. Are you with me? Hey, the, the body of Christ is called to be the family of God. Hey, let me ask you this. Are you sharing life with your church? Hey, do you know the people in your church? Do you love the people in your church? Share the blessings together. I love what the book of Hebrews says. It says it this way. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24, it says, And let us consider one, and also, one another to provoke unto love and to good works. Now, it's a very interesting word here. The word provoke is generally seen as a negative word. The word provoke, usually we think about someone that's being mean or hurtful. And yet the Lord uses this word very specifically here, that we would provoke someone to love, and to good works. Hey, well, let me ask you this. Who are you provoking to love more? Who are you provoking to do the good works that we're called to, to love others, encourage one another, give gifts, and, and, and provide for one another to put others ahead of you? Hey, who are you encouraging? Let me ask you this. Who's encouraging you? Hey, do you have friends in your life that is encouraging you to, to be a better believer, to read the Bible deeply, and, and to walk with God, and to pray in the Word? Hey, who are those people in your life? Do you have people in your life that are provoking you to love and to good works? This next verse, it says, And not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as ye see the day approaching." Now, I realize that a lot of times we use this verse in regard to the local assembly of the church, but can I say, the application is so much greater than that, that we should be encouraging other, each other every day, not just on Sunday, not just on Wednesday, or whenever your church meets. You should be encouraging people every day, and so much the more, hey, we are in that, so much the more as we see that Jesus is coming soon, and he's coming soon. Hey, let me ask you this, have you encouraged people more this year or less this year? 
well, you know, pastor, we haven't had as, as many services, and therefore, no, no, no. Hey, don't be hindered by the lack of services. Your service to Jesus doesn't stop because there might be less services. Hey, you can still be the Christian that God has called you to be just because it might look a little bit different in this moment. Hey, keep encouraging people. Keep lifting one another up. 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 11-13 through 13 says, Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye do. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you, and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake and be at peace among yourselves. Can I encourage you? There's two parts to this I want to encourage you in. Number one, do you know the people that you go to church with? Do you know the people you go to church? Do you know their burdens? Do you ask their burdens. Hey, can I give the other side of this? Do you share your burdens? Man, I would encourage you. Many times we feel like people aren't bearing our burdens, but we can't bear what we don't share. Hey, people can't help you with your, your hardship or your trial or your struggle if you don't share what you're going through. Man, it's important that you know the people that you go to church with. Hey, it's important for you to know your pastor and his family, to love them and encourage them and strengthen them. Let me ask you, are you encouraging one another? Are you lifting up your pastor during this time? Are you lifting up your, your, the other members in your church? You know, if we're not careful, we, get, we can get almost stagnant waiting for people to do it to us. But man, I encourage you, go share that love with somebody and share that encouragement with somebody. You know what I've found? The people that are sharing love and encouragement, they don't lack for love and encouragement. Man, that, that, the law of sowing and reaping. Man, when I share love, I receive love. When I share encouragement, I receive encouragement. Are you doing that? Let me give the last one and we'll be done. We need to share in the burdens. We need to share in the burdens. Hey, there's many burdens in this life. There's many things that we're going to. Let me ask you, are you sharing the, 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 the blessings of trials? I, I know we're talking about burdens, but there's also the blessing of the trial. See, what happens... We go through the burden, and we all go through these burdens, and if we're not careful, we forget that it's actually a blessing. See, the reason why you're walking through what you're walking through, or have walked through what you walked through, was not so that you would just have that experience personally. It was so that you could share that experience with other believers. They need to hear how God used your burden to make a blessing. They need to hear how God helped you and strengthened you through that trial. See, there is a burden, but God makes burdens blessings. And He does that so that you can share that with somebody. Hey, there's many things that we go through in life, but they're not so that we can just have them for ourselves and have that experience personally. It's so that we can encourage other people. Man, what I like about the early church was they were a church that shared things together. Uh, I'm reminded what it said in our verses. It said that they had all things common. Uh, the commonality of their fellowship was this. Hey, I'm going to share with you what I'm going through. I'm going to share uh, my daily life. I'm going to share my burdens. I'm going to share my blessings. I'm going to share the mountaintops, and I'm going to share the valleys. Hey, are you sharing life with other believers? Are you sharing that with other people? We share the blessings of trials. I love what the Bible says in, in Galatians 6.2. It says, Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. You know what God wants us to do? God wants us to share that and fulfill His will. When we share these trials, when we share the burdens and the blessings of the burden, when we share those things, what we're doing is we're fulfilling God's plan. God's plan is, yes, for you to go through that trial and to carry that burden with Him. He carries it for us. But then that you would learn from it so that you could tell other people that that burden was actually a blessing, that God was setting you up for something greater Bear ye one another's burdens. Watch what he says in Psalm. I love how the psalmist put it. Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. You know, so many times what happens when we're not sharing the blessings of the burdens. There's other people around us that feel like, man, I'm, I'm, I'm getting destroyed by this trial. I'm overwhelmed by this trial. You know what they need you, you to share? Hey, God, didn't, God wasn't hurting me. He was helping me. Hey, God wasn't hurting me. He was helping me. Somebody around you right now needs to hear about how God lifted you through that trial, about how He strengthened you through that trial. We share 
those blessings. Watch this. We share the blessings of heart. We share the blessings of heart. It's important that we understand that we need to share the blessings of heart. There are things that are working inside of us, and it feels like a burden. And God changes that burden to a blessing, and we begin to share our heart with other people. You know what we're missing in our churches nowadays? Is we're missing that community sometimes. That willingness to remove the distractions. You know, not just maybe tag somebody on a social post or or send somebody a text, but we're missing that interaction, that community, that fellowship, that, watch this, sharing life, sharing our heart. And let me encourage you. I know it, it feels so easy to be so distant right now, but let me encourage you. Find a brother, find a sister, find a friend, find a, a, a fellow disciple, and share your heart. Hey, right now, I'm just I'm carrying some things. And pray together. And share that. Man, what I have found is that when I do that, God begins to unpack both things that I needed to see as they encourage me and strengthen me, but also things that they needed to see. I I love what Romans says in Romans chapter 12. It says in verse 15, Rejoice with them that do rejoice, and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one to another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. Recompense to no man evil for evil, and provide things honest in the sight of all men. Watch this. And if it be possible, if it's possible at all, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. You know what? What the devil wants us to do is pull us apart. What God wants us to do is bring us together. What God wants to do is make a cohesive union of the church, that that God's people are loving one another, encouraging one another, sharing in the burdens, sharing in the blessings, reaching people together. Hey, let's go reach. Hey, hey, I got a friend at work. Will you come pray with me about that? What the devil wants us to do is pull us apart and divide us and destroy us because he would love to see that. But there's a God in heaven who wants us to know that we can be encouraged and we can be strengthened. Hey, church, hey, let me encourage you. It's time to share our lives with one another It's time to share the word. It's time to share the blessings. It's time to share the burden. And it's time to see God make disciples. Hey, let me remind you, are you making disciples? Are you a disciple? Hey, are you you fulfilling God's plan for your life? Hey, I'm reminded I I have four boys and one on the way. And I talked to them about this the other day, and I'll be done. I said, you know what happens when we share? Every time we share, what happens is we remove something out of our hands and we place it in someone else's hand. But what that does is it also opens us up to receive more. See, when my hands are filled with what I have, I cannot receive the next blessings that God has for us. And what sharing does is it takes the blessings that I've already enjoyed and it gives them to somebody else so that they can now enjoy them. But when my hands are empty of the blessings because I've given them, my hands are open to receive the blessings now that God has planned for my future. Hey, don't miss out on the future blessings because you're holding on to the blessings of the past. Share those blessings. Share your heart and let God do a great work. Thank you for letting me be with you this morning. May this be a help and encouragement both today and in your week. And let God use you to share the word of God, to share the blessings, and to make disciples for the cause of Christ. I don't know when I'll see you again, but I know this, that if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, we'll spend eternity together, and I look forward to that day. Be encouraged, love God, and serve Him faithfully. Thank you for letting me be with you this morning. God bless. Well, amen. Thank you so much, Pastor John, for that great truth tonight, for the word uh, about sharing. How well do you share? How well do you share your Christian life, the burdens of others, the gospel with others. How well do you share? Uh, What a great thought. Let's tonight make sure that we spend some time alone with the Lord and uh, asking the Lord and seeking from God where in our lives we need some growth concerning this. And uh, let's, let's do that tonight. And let's commit to be Christians who share with others. Let's do that tonight. Thank you so much. Uh, for being on with us tonight, for being here, part of the service tonight. 
Uh, I hope that you were helped and blessed and challenged and encouraged tonight. All of those things. And uh, I hope that you, I hope that it was a help to you in your life. And uh, I know it was for me. And I, I listened to this actually a couple times and uh, already before tonight. So uh, it, it, and I just allowed it to continue to, uh, to, uh, to just try to continue absorbing it. So I encourage you to do that as well. Maybe tomorrow or, or uh, even Friday or sometime, if you have another uh, little bit of time, pull the message, pull this video uh, service back up. And, uh, you know, you can just kind of click ahead to the, the time of the Bible teaching, but listen to it again, absorb it, receive it again in your life. Uh, may we be Christians that were that was taught tonight. Let's share with one another. So I hope that that was a help to you. Uh, I appreciate your time tonight. I appreciate you being with us tonight. And uh, I am just uh, looking forward to our next time together. Uh, we'll be in person on Sunday morning at 1030 for our Sunday morning worship service. I hope you can join us on Sunday morning. And then we'll be back here next Wednesday evening for week three of our Summer Bible Conference with another guest speaker. And I'm excited for you to hear from him as well. And I know that's going to be a help and a blessing uh, all over again to you and your life. And so uh, be here with us next Wednesday as well if you can. All right. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. I hope that you have a wonderful evening and a wonderful rest of the week. Let's pray together and then you'll be dismissed. God, thank you so much for this message that we heard and received in our hearts and lives this evening. I pray that you would just bless Brother Jupp for his time of preparing this message for us and uh, uh, each of the uh, pastors that have spent time to prepare these messages for our church. I pray you bless them. We thank you for it. And I pray that you'd help us to uh, grow in any way that you've taught us tonight and, and shown us where we need to tonight. May we share with others in all of these areas that we've, uh, uh, that we've heard tonight. Thank you for it, Lord. Uh, may you use it in our hearts. May we apply it to our lives. And I pray that we would be a church that cares and shares with others. And uh, I pray that you'd bless. Lord, keep us safe as we uh, go about uh, the rest of our week with work and different things on our schedules. And may you bring us into your house on Sunday for worship together as your bride. I pray that you'd bless that as well. Bless our weekend ahead of us. In your name we do pray. Amen. All right. Thanks, church family, for being here tonight. You have a great week. You are dismissed. Oh, sing Show